with a black tan on. Friends, old. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today is September 13th, I believe, Wednesday. We're gonna pull some samples on the corn and uh, bring them up and get an egg bag and get the moisture tested, see what the, uh, the full plant moisture is and see if we can start chopping this weekend. Haven't showed you much of this barn this year, but uh, we're getting full alfalfa. There's, it's 100% pure alfalfa in this barn. So far, I think there's 510 in here, and uh, we can get about 560. So uh, if we can get a nice dry fourth cut, this will be completely full. Let's get on with the day. Before we start this video, guys, there is not much action shots of chopping. If you want a bunch of action shots, go over to Brad Larson, Larson Valley Farms, on YouTube. Uh, he's doing some awesome chopping videos. So go over there and uh, enjoy the rest of this video. Well, so we're inside the cornfield. Here's our uh, just about shoulder height, and I'm six foot. This is what it looks like. Um, there's gonna be a fair amount of stock moisture, I'm assuming. I think this stuff's gonna come back too wet. I think this stuff, to me, looks over 65, and we're bagging beef cow operation. I mean, that there's no need to deal with frozen chunks and stuff for us, but uh, the reason why I'm out here is everybody's saying for some reason this year with the drought and stuff, the corn is actually way, way drier than it looks, everybody's saying. So uh, I got my knife here. I'm gonna cut three, four stalks. And uh, since we're running up there anyways, they have the burn down days um, to grab a bag, have them check it. So, and if it's 60, 65 even, I think we still might chop this weekend. Uh, any weather than that, uh, we're definitely gonna hold off another week, so. I'll get these stocks cut and uh, we'll go from there. So I got my four stocks cut and uh, I think just for fun, I'm gonna go to a dry patch of the field and uh, cut three, four there and compare moisture, bring two samples up there and just make sure that, let's see what the driest is doing too. So we got a better idea. I could do the wettest, but there's some wet patches in this field or in these, this farm that uh, it's still grass green yet and you can't really go off that because it will blend in the bag just fine so it's hard to tell but go the other way we are in a way drier spot of the field so i'm going to cut a sample out of this and just see what the real dry stuff has been doing so, the corn don't look too bad here for uh, the year we've had Shoot. That's a decent cob right there. So I'll get these cut. So these are just two cobs I took. Um, I don't know, I didn't really look around. I would say for the year we've had half ass decent uh, kernel depth. We are, it looks to be milk line, I don't know. Right around half, I guess. But uh, there's the samples. We're gonna run these up and uh, go from there. Like I said, halfway decent ears for uh, the year we've been dealt. I'm very interested to see how uh, how it go how, how the yield is. I mean, you never know till we get uh, get the combine out and start showing some. But. Uh, Expectations are not very high. Well, just got back. That's our silage bag. First year doing a nine foot bag. We're gonna do a nine by 150. I believe you can get like 220, 225 ton in there, um, which is not very much silage to chop, but uh, it'll get us by and we'll combine shell out the rest. Um, this is our hybrid winter rye we purchased. So this will be our first year growing hybrid rye. I got high hopes for it. Uh, we got hybrid grain rye. 
going in the tough grass field and then uh, after we feed, chop off corn silage we're going to do some hybrid forage rye so what really sold me on the the forage hybrid is uh, they say the standability is way greater they say it won't lodge you can push the nitrogen and they say it won't go down whether that's true or not we're going to find out um, i have my doubts but it's definitely worth a try because that's one of the biggest downfalls with rye is when you push the nitrogen they say that or in my experience is it just goes flat and grows sideways so last weekend we ended up running everybody through the chute pulling the two bulls and uh, winning the calves so this is probably how the pens will be set up throughout the winter but uh, as you can tell ballings to a minimum they uh, took weaning pretty good they're on roughly well this pen is about two pounds of uh, two pounds of grain per head per day and this pen is about two and a half that's what they're eating now so we got wean bottle calves in with this group and then a few lighter weights so we actually sold quite a bit of oh, I shouldn't say quite a few dozen or so animals uh, this late summer a couple cow cows and some heavier weights and uh, did all right hoping this is the right move we're gonna have should have plenty of feed so hoping it's the right move to uh, feed these guys till spring um, as far as buying lightweights for background in it's still a possibility but uh, yeah, I can't really say for sure or not. Um, it's looking like we will. Uh, I'm gonna try and buy a dozen or so, half a dozen of uh, good registered bred cows to uh, replace the couple and grow the herd a little bit. So, as you can tell, um, these bottle calves were dehorned. A couple of them we had to uh, cut and burn, and a couple they just burned. So, but other than that, they're doing really well. And then uh, in the outside pen here, we have our bread heifers. So they're growing really good. We'll probably uh, have them separate for about, I don't know, another three weeks or so. Make sure the cows are good and dried up. And uh, throw all these guys together. Maybe push the bulls or some out here, other, something else out here to uh, free up a pen. And maybe buy some backgrounding calves. I don't know. Market's still pretty damn high. Um, there's more money to be made in the backgrounding calves when the, the market's cheaper. You got less of a risk. Because uh, the most money to be made is buying the considered risky calves. I mean, I, they're not that risky. I mean, especially if you're buying beef calves. They're pretty hardy. But buy them lighter weights and then uh, mix and match a group together. Bigger groups and... Uh, capitalize on that so that's our bottle beef calf she is uh for sure for sure the smallest animal on the farm but she's still growing and then uh we've been working out here getting ready to chop corn the commodity bay still isn't done we gotta start hounding some people and uh get some concrete in there to get it curing but this is where we'll put the bag again this is our bag pad so typically do an 8x200 but uh, this year we're going to try 9x150 a little bit more feed in a shorter bag and uh, see how that goes and also the plan is in the cow, cow lot right there I uh, plan on uh, no tilling some winter rye in there and uh, just see see what happens so just kind of a little experiment and if you can tell, see beyond that yet, fourth cutting alfalfa is looking really, really good. Once we get done uh, chopping corn, we gotta get back on the hay kick. Um, we'll have a fourth cut alfalfa probably. I mean, it's not set in stone yet because there ain't a whole lot out there. I'd say right now as it stands, there's probably three quarter ton an acre which the cutoff is probably a ton if there ain't does if there doesn't look like there's a ton out there i probably won't uh won't cut forth cut just let it grow 
just so we don't risk it. But uh, other than that, we have another 220, 230 acres of grass hay, straight grass. Second cut to make, um, just two cuts on that because it. So there's some some hay fields we're not even going to cut again. Some grass just because they never came back after the drought. And then uh, roughly 100 acres or so of uh, alfalfa grass mix. So just right around the 300 acres left and uh, hay will be done. Still got to pull the combine out, start working on that to uh, get ready to shell some corn. So and the rest of the heifers, I think there's seven in this group if I remember right. So, and they look really good this year. I think I am going to uh, try next year and uh, do some high moisture corn. I think I'm going to build like a bunker, pour concrete slab and do some bunker blocks and uh, pack and cover some high moisture ground corn just roll it or hammer mill or roller mill it and then uh, pack it and cover it and feed that to the calves see how that works so but next year is far off so we'll see what are you doing you're drilling mm -hmm. yeah how's it going good i don't think so not that good so i just got, got the last of the first pallet in the drill is doing a good job itself, but uh, with how dry the soil is, we're not turning up any wet dirt, so we are we're having a really hard time seeing where we've been and where we haven't. Auto steer would take care of that problem, or uh, wet or dirt. So I got frustrated, so I kicked myself out. Amanda took over. So we're right across uh, from where we're planting rye and uh, this is the other field that goes with that farm. And I don't think I covered this on YouTube at all, but we actually had the white combine come through. I don't think it hurt this stuff all too bad. It was just starting to dent. So if I was going to pick any stage, I'd probably pick this stage. This is our farthest north farm, and uh, there's actually in the area a lot of hail damage this year. So a lot more than I've seen in quite a few years. But So I'd say the top 50% top of the leaves completely shredded. I mean, there's partials here, I guess. So, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Can't change anything. But... I'll grab an ear and show you what it looks like. Pretty decent corn. So here's the ear. 1835. Pollinated pretty good. A little bit of tip back. Um, but nothing for uh, how bad the drought was this year. So as you can see, my daughter's getting impatient in the truck. So we better keep going. We got a lot of stuff going on right now. And uh, 
This will probably maybe be the first uh, first field we start on, just because I don't know if this is going to affect the standability. So I haven't really had much experience in hail damaged corn. So if you guys know, uh, I'm assuming the stock quality ain't going to be as good, being that it's got damage. But if you know, leave it in the comments. All in all, this corn actually does look pretty good for being drought stressed and uh, hail damaged. It's turning pretty fast, but uh, we're easily a few weeks out. Off again. Maya, come. We're getting ready for chopping, so uh, we're dividing and conquering. Me and the boss are uh, gonna head out, so we left eight, eight bags there. That might not finish the field, uh, it'll get close. I'm gonna go get the box on loading tractor home. Uh, we got the bagger back and uh, keep getting ready. I think we're gonna start right bright and early tomorrow chopping. Just sweeping this lo load out, this wagon, and uh, we got a partial load. We are at the end of the bag. We're gonna run another partial in, and uh, the bag's gonna be full. Get them nice and clean because they won't be used for a few weeks. All loading with the 5085E and uh, hanging with the New Holland. Started at uh, 1 yesterday afternoon, stopped at about 10 o'clock last night, and we had this full load that we chopped this morning, and he's filling the last half of the load. That's a lot of food feed in that short amount of time. I'm gonna call that good. Got the Gray Plains 1206 NT hooked up to the truck. It's cleaned out and uh, ready to go back. Uh, this is actually a rental from our local county soil and water. So uh, if you're local, there's the phone number. Uh, awesome drill. Uh, my only only complaint is uh, it needs markers or uh, you need a tractor with GPS because in certain conditions it is really hard to see where you've been and I think if the ground if we had some moisture I think that'd be totally different but uh, it's just the cards we've been dealt no-till coulters are uh, adjustable depth um, away from your openers and your closing wheels so pretty much like a corn planter got your adjustable t handles um, each whole set of holes is a quarter inch uh, press wheels openers everything I have no uh, no real complaint to the operation of this drill it's uh, seven half space inch spacing with large and small seed box plenty of capacity for winter rye um, it looks like it, the boxes are pretty small for uh, the small seed but uh, I think I think you'd, I didn't use it, but I think you'd be happy with it. So overall an awesome drill. I definitely wouldn't mind owning one of these, but uh, the price for a, for a 12 foot drill is crazy. I think I priced one of these out new and I think they're like $59,000. So if I was gonna spend that much money, it would uh, be a minimum of 24 feet wide. Uh, it takes a lot of time to cover the big fields with this small drill but uh we got the job done well there's the nine by 150 uh 223 or 222 ton in there of corn silage so first year ever doing a, a nine foot usually we're always eight foot and uh i really really like the nine foot for the uh, amount of tons per foot you get Egg bagger laid it out beautiful and uh, we got a ton of corn left. The corn yielded, I think it came to 21, almost 21 and a half ton of the acre. And uh, for a drought year, I will take that. I was really thinking that uh, we were gonna be down in the 12, 13, but it surprised me. Here are our, uh, them bread heifers looking nice. 
couple more weeks and they'll join the cows. There's the standing corn we have left and uh, all the chopped ground. If you can see the marks was no-tilled into uh, KWS forage hybrid winter rye. So we'll see how this tons out and uh, I have high hopes for it. And the rest that we planted earlier on Friday will all be, the plan is to combine it. Uh, if for some reason it don't look very good in the spring, uh, we can cut and bale or chop all that too. So I would like to uh, thank all you guys for watching. I don't know what I got for a video as far as content, but I'll put all these clips together and get something out for you. So like, comment, subscribe, follow along for more. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good week, everybody.